Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to Learn Linux TV. In today's video, we're going to talk about a vulnerability in Log4j. Log4j is a very popular logging utility within Java, and it's used by quite a few applications out there. And unfortunately, it has a new vulnerability that's been dubbed Log4Shell. Specifically, the identifier for this vulnerability is CVE 2021-44228. Try saying that four times fast. Now, in this video, what I want to do is take a different approach when it comes to talking about this vulnerability, because the thing is, a lot of news sources are talking about this. There's no shortage of news online, both on major news sites as well as YouTube itself. So there's no shortage of information about this vulnerability. So I wanted to make sure that this was a more unique video and I wanted to go a different direction that I thought would be a little bit more interesting. And there's actually a few different things I'm going to be doing differently in this video than normal. And of course, I'm going to explain a little bit about what this vulnerability is, because even though it's covered in other places, I do need to give you guys a summary just in case anyone watching this video isn't already aware of what this vulnerability is and why everybody is freaking out about it. And after I give you some information about this vulnerability, what I want to do is talk about how CrowdSec is handling this because the way they're going about this is very interesting. And even though it hasn't really been that much time at all since I've done the previous video about CrowdSec, well, the news hit the wire and CrowdSec is handling this in a very interesting way. And I want to talk about that. And not only that, what I'm also going to do is SSH into the Learn Linux TV server. Yes, the actual LearnLinux.tv server and we're going to run a script on that server to find out if it's vulnerable. And then we'll circle back to CrowdSec and I'll show you how to install a collection that will add additional benefit to that utility for the server. But first of all, what is this Log4Shell vulnerability? Why is it so important? Why are people freaking out about this? And what should you do about it? And should you even care in the first place? Well, the short answer is yes, you should care about it because if this was a vulnerability that wasn't that big of a deal, then I wouldn't even want to do a video about it. I mean, there's been all kinds of security vulnerabilities that I've not done a video on because I felt that if it's not really as bad as people are making it out to be, then I don't want to join and just, you know, create some drama and more buzz about something that really doesn't matter just for the sake of views. I only want to create a video if I have something to say, which I absolutely do. And this vulnerability is actually as serious as people are making it out to be. And like I mentioned earlier, the vulnerability has been identified as CVE 2021-44228. Now, what you're seeing on the screen right now is the actual CVE information for this vulnerability. Now, I will have links down below in the description that you can follow to go ahead and read more about this vulnerability. But like I mentioned, it's been dubbed CVE 2021-44228. And here's the website for the vulnerability. But what does this all mean? What is Log4j? Why is it called Log4Shell? And why are people actually concerned about this? Well, in short, Log4Shell pertains to a vulnerability in a popular logging utility called Log4j. And Log4j is a super popular logging utility that's used within countless Java programs. And as a side note, here we are at the tail end of 2021, and I guess it's only fitting that such a crazy year when it comes to security and many other sources of drama included, that we're closing out the year with yet another vulnerability that's related to Java. I mean, I lost count about how many times a Java-related vulnerability has been in the news, but here we are yet again. In particular, the Log4Shell vulnerability has to do with a feature that was added in Log4j sometime in 2013, and this feature in particular allows for strings within log files to be parsed. Okay, so hold on a minute here. Um, we have a logging utility, and this logging utility in particular is able to parse a string of text as if it was a command and execute it. What could possibly go wrong with that? 
And what's really bad about this is that an outside attacker can use this vulnerability to have the server execute something in their favor by triggering the vulnerable server to connect to a server that's being controlled by the attacker. So basically, an outside attacker can cause a server to log a very specific string and have that string execute a command that then allows them to get into the server. And what makes this vulnerability even worse is how easy it is to actually use this vulnerability to your advantage. This is not a situation where you have to have physical access or the planets have to be aligned in a very specific way. You require a particular combination of 10 different programs of specific versions or a specific amount of information in RAM. None of that. Literally, it's as simple as an attacker just has a specially crafted JNDI URL or JINDI URL with a specific string that can execute something to allow your logging server to connect to their server and run some code. That's a pretty big deal. And perhaps that's why it's been given a 10 out of 10 when it comes to its severity. Now, to bring this back to reality though, this actually only affects you if you are running Log4j. So if you are sure that you are not using this at all, then you're probably fine. I mean, for example, you might think that you don't have anything running Java in your environment and that this doesn't pertain to you, but perhaps that container that you've downloaded the other day, maybe you have something that's running Java inside there. Maybe that's using Log4j. Maybe you have an IoT device or some sort of embedded device that's using Java on its side, and maybe then that will get you infected. Who knows? You really do have to check and make sure that you audit things to see if you have a presence of Log4j in your infrastructure. Thankfully, there are patches available right now, but the situation is still developing, so it's entirely possible that more information will be discovered in the near future. And perhaps that might actually culminate in yet another patch. There's already been two patches for this. The first one actually exposed a DDoS opportunity, and the second patch actually patches the patch that patches this vulnerability. You really can't make this stuff up. So anyway, this situation is still being explored and there's going to be more information that'll no doubt hit the news here pretty soon. And speaking of news, Zhao and I recently did a new episode of the Enterprise Linux Security Podcast that goes into even more detail about Log4j and we give our opinions in that episode of that podcast. So definitely check out that episode if you haven't already seen it. And also, in addition to that, there's no shortage, like I mentioned, of articles online that are talking about this vulnerability. Okay, so what does this have to do with CrowdSec exactly? Well, CrowdSec is a tool, if you didn't already know, that you can install on your Linux server that helps protect it against outside attacks. Now, CrowdSec doesn't actually advertise that they will give you 100% protection. I mean, any service that claims to offer that is automatically suspicious because there's no such thing as 100% security. If there was, we wouldn't even be having this conversation right now. But what CrowdSec aims to do is add another layer of protection to your server, and they never advertise that they are the only layer that you should have. Now, normally a product like this costs a lot of money, but it costs absolutely nothing. You don't even have to give them your contact information. You don't have to pay for like a subscription or something like that. It's actually free and open source in every sense of the word. And one of the things that I want to shine some light on is the fact that they are working in the community with the community to help this issue. Recently, as the news is still developing in regards to the log for shell vulnerability, CrowdSec is keeping an eye on what's going on out there, and there's an interesting discussion thread going on right now on their GitHub profile. They are going through IPs right now. There's like 1,800 plus IPs that they're going through, and they're investigating this issue to try to find out which IPs out there are actually using or attempting to use this vulnerability to break into servers. And the thing is, having information about which IP addresses are using a vulnerability that could be valuable information. They could charge for this, like a lot of money, but it's right there on GitHub, in the open. You don't even have to have a GitHub account to see it. So literally right now, community members are adding IPs to this list as they find them, and it's just a great example of working with the community to solve a problem. And like I mentioned, as of recording time, 
There's over 1,800 IP addresses on that list so far, and they've even found some among those IPs that are actually attempting to exploit with this vulnerability. However, that's not all. In the public CrowdSec repository on GitHub, poll request number 311 was submitted about five days or so ago as of recording time, and this particular pull request is an update to a scenario that you can install on your server alongside CrowdSec to help it understand when your server is possibly seeing a real attack that utilizes this vulnerability. And the code is simple. In fact, here it is. As of right now, it contains just 23 lines. It's written in YAML, and as a result of that, it's very easy to understand. And what this will do is add a filter to CrowdSec, so that way it'll understand what type of behavior to look for that might imply that someone is attempting to utilize this exploit. Now, I'll get back to CrowdSec in just a moment, but I want to take a short segue into another topic where I'm going to show you guys a script you can run to find out if your server might be impacted by this vulnerability. But here's the catch. I'm going to run this script on the production learnlinux.tv server. And yes, I know you should always run code against development environments first, but you know, I'm a one man company. There's no CTO to, you know, anger about this. I am the person, so if I break it, well, I have to deal with it. But thankfully, I have backup, so I'm not too worried about that. If I do something wrong and break everything, then I guess I'll just segue into me restoring the server back to the way it was before I screwed it up. So I don't mean to say that it's okay for you guys to just go on production servers and start running scripts or anything like that. But again, I'm a one-man company, and I only have to answer to myself, so let's have some fun. All right, so here I am on my studio laptop, and I'm fresh off my review of Pop! OS 2110, so you should probably check out that review if you haven't already seen it. But right here, I have that same installation. It's a fresh installation. It's ready to go. So let's open up a terminal and SSH into the learnlinux.tv website, and let's run a script. So I'll just go ahead and make this full screen, crank up the font size, and let's go. Let's use SSH to connect to my server. So in my case, it's just j at learnlinux.tv. And there we go. And here we are. Now, of course, everything looks a little strange here because I have the font size cranked all the way up. I just want to make sure that you guys are all able to read this. So let's go ahead and do it. So I'll switch over to root, and that's where I'm at right now. I want to just make sure this script has full permission to do everything it needs to do. And as an aside, you should never run a script that you found on the internet, not even the one that I link in the description of this video, because you should always check a script before you run it. And I've already taken a look at this offline, but who knows if something might change in the future after I've run it. Just always do your due diligence and vet everything you run, every command you run, before you run it. So what I'll do is paste in the command, and there it is. I'll put a link to this down below along with everything else. I actually found this particular command from a Tech Republic article, so that's what I'll link to down below. But what this script is supposed to do is let me know if my server is vulnerable. I don't think it's vulnerable, but let's find out. Now, obviously, Java is not installed, so I didn't really think that it was going to find anything. But this script is actually careful, though. It's letting us know that this script is not 100% proof that I'm not vulnerable. It just means that it wasn't able to find a vulnerability on the server. Doesn't mean that maybe there wasn't something it was unable to check. They don't want to take responsibility and give you a, you know, 100% perfect rating or anything like that. It wasn't able to find that I was vulnerable and I was expecting it not to find that. I mean, I'm not even running Java anyway, but you never know if maybe some other library came down from another package anything is possible. So that's a good sign. It doesn't look like I'm actually vulnerable to this, but what I'm going to do is install a collection for CrowdSec on my server that's going to help protect me from this vulnerability. Now again, most likely, I'm not actually vulnerable to this anyway. However, Log4j is just one of several vulnerabilities that this collection will protect me from, so there's no harm in having it installed. I may as well just add this to my server. So now we get back into CrowdSec and see what they can do for us because, well, they made this available 
They updated this collection to help support protection against Log4j or the Log4Shell vulnerability. Let's install it. Now, I'm not going to bother showing you how to install CrowdSec. I've gone over that in a previous video. You could check out any of those videos if you'd like to see a walkthrough on how to do that, or you could just check out their documentation. So first, what I'm going to do is run CSCLI, hub, and then update. I just want to make sure that everything is synchronized. So now that's updated. So next, what I'll do is run CSCLI, collections, install, crowd security, slash HTTP hyphen CVE. Let's see what happens. And that was it. So at the end here, it's telling me to reload CrowdSec, so I'll do that. And now that's implemented. Now again, if we check out the web page for this particular collection, we can see that there's a handful of vulnerabilities that it tries to help protect us from, and the log for shell vulnerability is just one of them, but it's really important to emphasize that installing this does not give you 100% protection from anything. You are enhancing your security. Again, CrowdSec is an awesome security layer that you can add to your server, but it's a security layer not a replacement for other types of things that you might do to protect your server. So just keep your expectations in mind. But it's really awesome that they make this available right there out in the open in the clear for you to actually see what it looks like to communicate and find out more about a vulnerability, to put in pull requests, to work with a community, to get this going. And that's actually what I want to shine some light on right here because that's the right way to do it. Now, the thing is, like I mentioned before, the log for shell vulnerability is still developing, so there's no telling what information might be coming. So even if CrowdSec could give you 100% protection against it, it's only a matter of time before it changes or someone discovers more about it, and maybe the current mitigations will no longer have an effect. There's no telling what's going to happen, so you do need to keep your eye on the news. But thankfully, CrowdSec is also keeping their eyes on it, and it's just so fascinating watching them work with the community. And that's just great. I think that's a great example of how to do it. And that's why I wanted to shed some light on CrowdSec in this video. Now, if you want to find out more about Log4Shell, there's no shortage of things online, you know, blog posts, articles, news articles, and even the episode of the Enterprise Linux Security Podcast that I've already mentioned, where Zhao and I, we talk about this. You could check that out as well. That video should already be out and it should be propagating to the podcast networks as we speak. But let me know what you thought about this content in the comments down below. I think it's awesome to do a video about a developing story and maybe I'll have more to say about it as we continue. And even my friend Tom Lawrence did a video about this as well, which you should also check out. He does some great work over there at Lawrence Systems. So check out his video. I will link to that as well. And also subscribe to his channel as well because it's really cool. And make sure you subscribe to Learn Linux TV as well for the latest in Linux. I have some awesome content coming very soon. Thank you so much for watching.